The space race led to many advancements in science and technology for the Soviet Union and the USA. However, even with all the advancements during that era, there were plenty of failures, mysterious accidents and questionable cover-ups, all for the sake of winning. Still, it didn't stop a number of them from coming to light. Today's video uncovers the mysteries behind the failure of the first Soyuz mission and the death of Vladimir Komarov, a cosmonaut, a hero of the Soviet Union and a true friend. His death was a significant blow to the Soviet space program and it sparked controversy and speculation surrounding the safety of Soviet spacecraft. This is his story. Let's travel back in time to the start of the space race. It began in the late 1950s when the Soviet Union launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1. It continued through the 1960s with a series of milestones including the first human in space, Yuri Gagarin, and the first human on the moon, Neil Armstrong. The Soviet Union was going head-to-head -head with the USA, each trying to rack up the most firsts in space, and an already fierce competition was further fueled by political tensions between both nations and the desire of each to demonstrate technological and military superiority. It was in the midst of all this that two colleagues, both pilots in the Soviet Union, became best friends. Vladimir Komarov was already a seasoned Soviet Air Force pilot by the time he met Yuri Gagarin. They met during Komarov's training at what is now called the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, and the pair became close friends. They trained together for the Vostok program, which led to Gagarin becoming the first human to journey into outer space in 1961. Komarov served as Gagarin's backup for the historic mission, and it strengthened their relationship even more. In 1965, along with Gagarin, Komarov was in charge of the Voshgod 2's flight preparations, which resulted in the first extravehicular activity in space. With their experience, knowledge and brilliance, the pair became a dynamic duo. At the peak of their careers, Gagarin and Komarov were two of the top three earning cosmonauts in the Soviet Union, and things were rosy. Until... The Soyuz program began in the 1960s, and it was the Soviet Union's attempt to get a cosmonaut on the moon. As you'd expect for a mission of this magnitude, the Soviet Union wanted their best cosmonauts on the job, so they selected Komarov and Gagarin. In 1967, Leonid Brezhnev, the leader of the Soviet Union at the time, wanted something grand to celebrate the country's 50th anniversary of its communist revolution. What better way to show off the magnificence and supremacy of the Soviet Union than attempting a space feat unlike any before? His plan was to send the country's newest line of rockets to space. The Soyuz 1 would head out first, orbit the Earth for a while, then intercept a second spacecraft on the following day. The cosmonaut in the first craft would then swap places with a cosmonaut from the second. Sounds spectacular, right? In Brezhnev's head, it was going to be glorious, almost like it was ordained by some high power. There was only one problem, the ship wasn't ready for a trip to space. In truth, Brezhnev felt pressure to perform. At the time, America was seemingly winning the space race with a series of spectacular feats that would culminate in Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, and the Russian leader felt like his country was being left behind. Failure was not an option. Due to their extremely important roles in the Soyuz program, the dynamic duo, along with several senior technicians, inspected the ship and found it had no less than 203 likely fatal problems. It wasn't ready. No one could be expected to fly that thing anywhere, least of all to space. However, there was immense political pressure surrounding this particular mission, and the teams involved knew it. The situation was very similar to America's Apollo 1 disaster that had happened earlier in 1967, and even though Gagarin and Komarov complained about the unreadiness of the ship, their complaints fell on deaf ears. As a matter of fact, 
anyone that complained or said anything against the launch of the spacecraft was either fired or shipped off to Siberia. It didn't help that all unmanned test flights of the Soyuz capsules ended in disaster. The failures of the test flights and the general design of the intended spacecraft worried Gagarin and Komarov even more. At this point, Komarov, the lead cosmonaut, was anticipating the worst. He was certain he was being selected for a suicide mission. For this historic and unprecedented mission, Vladimir Komarov would man the first spacecraft, while two other cosmonauts would fly the Soyuz too. Komarov would make several attempts to disrupt the mission, but when he realized that Gagarin was chosen as his backup pilot, he decided to go through with it, putting his own neck on the line to save his best friend. Komarov knew he was going to die. It has been reported that, before launch, Komarov met with a mutual friend and explained to him his reason for not refusing the mission. He said, if I don't make the flight, they'll send the backup instead. That's Yura, referring to Yuri Gagarin, and he'll die instead of me. We have to take care of him. He couldn't let his friend suffer this fate. So on launch day, April 23rd, 1967, Komarov suited up and boarded the Soyuz 1. There were reports that Yuri Gagarin made a final effort to disrupt the launch. He stormed the launch site, all suited up and ready to go. He was ready to undertake the mission if it meant his friend would not. But it soon became clear to the man who was already a national hero and a symbol of Soviet progress that no one was going to send him on this extremely dangerous journey. Komarov was doomed. The Soyuz 1 had a successful launch, but as soon as it began to orbit the Earth, everything went downhill. The antennas were first, they didn't open properly. Next, one of the two solar panels failed to deploy. This meant electricity within the capsule was in short supply, and it led to a failure of the spacecraft's guidance system. From there, things spiraled downward even faster. With only one panel sticking out, the ship was unbalanced, and it made keeping it at a particular altitude incredibly challenging, even for the highly skilled pilot on board. Komarov did all he could to steady the ship. He tried kicking at the wall of the solar panel. He tried everything he had learned from his rigorous training to correct the spacecraft's failing systems, but his actions were to no avail. With a depleted battery, Komarov was able to manage 13 orbits before Mission Control decided to pull the plug. The second launch, which was supposed to happen the next day, was cancelled, and Komarov was ordered to make a very difficult journey home. With the world listening in, the Soviets had to admit the failure of Soyuz 1, and Komarov was finally ordered to return. But with a failed guidance and altitude control system, Komarov would have had to do everything manually. That meant controlling the spacecraft's altitude throughout the entire re-entry process. On April 24th, Komarov revved his engine to begin an almost impossible re-entry, but damned if he didn't try. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to maintain altitude, and even worse, the engines stopped prematurely. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. His re-entry was rough, and the lopsided spacecraft was flung into Earth's atmosphere, spinning intensely as it was hurled towards the ground. But there was hope. At some point during this out-of-control freefall against all odds, the capsule slowed down and Komarov could use the spacecraft's parachute to land safely. But to show just how much of a mess the mission was, the main parachute failed to deploy. He tried deploying the reserve parachute, but of course that was tangled up by the main chute. It was at this point that Komarov's fate was truly sealed. With nothing to break its descent, the Soyuz capsule slammed into the Earth at more than 140 kilometers, 86 miles per hour. If the impact didn't kill Komarov, then the explosion that followed did. The spacecraft crashed at Orenburg Oblast in the Soviet Union. When the recovery team finally opened the hatch, the only discernible feature remaining of the veteran cosmonaut's charred body was his heel bone. 
Komarov's ashes were buried honourably in the wall of the Kremlin, and an official funeral was held in Moscow's Red Square on the 26th of April 1967. The incident caused the 50th anniversary celebrations to turn sour, but none was left more sour than Yuri Gagarin, who felt he could have done more to prevent his best friend's death. He became a shadow of himself, and he would die in a pilot crash the following year. The historic disaster would also bring to light the dark side of the space race, and rumours of several lives that had been lost prior to Soyuz 1, but buried by political interests. Although the Soyuz programme began poorly, Komarov's death served as a catalyst to engineer much better and safer spacecraft. In fact, the Soyuz spacecraft went on to become some of the safest and most successful in history. Vladimir Komarov's last words were, I feel excellent. Everything is in order. We honour a great cosmonaut and a true friend. What do you think of this story of the first Soyuz mission? Do you believe human sacrifice is inevitable in the race for progress? Let us know in the comments.